Greetings. Today we are going to discuss isotopes and average atomic mass. Let's think about the word isotope first. Iso is a Greek word or a root that comes from the Greek, Greek word iso, meaning equal. I believe, I did a little bit of research on this, that the word topos either comes from atoms or possibly the term place in Greek as well. And it may mean the same place. So isotope may mean the same place. But then what's an isotope? An isotope is, of a given element is an atom that has the same number of protons, but each of the isotopes has different masses. So they are all atoms. You may have five isotopes of the same atom. Each one has the same atomic number, but each one of those different isotopes has a different mass number. Because remember, the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. So if they have the same number of protons, the only thing that can vary is the number of neutrons. We're going to look at some examples of this. All right, this is pretty cool here. We have a little um, animation going. But first, I want you to focus on this part up here. We have already talked about the symbol, and we're going to use it more and more as we refer to isotopes. Remember that the A and the Z number, if you can't remember the order, remember RAS. RAS, R, is up here somewhere, and the A and the Z. Okay, middle name, last name. All right. The A number is the mass number, and the Z number is the atomic number. In other words, this would be the number of protons, and this would be the number of protons and neutrons added together. Then we have, of course, the chemical symbol. All right, take a look at this cool little anime. Over here, I have three different isotopes. All of these isotopes are found in hydrogen, naturally. So in a container full of hydrogen, I'm going to have some of this, some of these, and some of these. This one, I don't know why they call it hydrogen here, but it's actually hydrogen is the combination of all three. Actually, it's called protium, this first one. So there is a little correction here. This is called protium. Hydrogen is all of these. All of these make up hydrogen. There is only one proton in the center. Only one proton. The reddest proton. One proton. One proton. All of them have the same number of protons. Yet here in protium, you do not find any neutrons. There are no neutrons. Here in deuterium, deuterium meaning two particles, it has one neutron. And here in tritium there are two neutrons. So we have a mass number of one, a mass number of two, and a mass number of three. Because remember that the mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons. And here we have the mass number for each one of them. So what they differ in, notice that they do not differ in the number of protons, but they differ in the number of neutrons. Therefore, they have different masses or different mass numbers. All right, we have the same situation here. Now you can see they are, there's a lithium has three protons, three protons, and three protons. These are three isotopes of lithium. However, this one has a total of six 
subatomic particles, protons and neutrons. This one has seven protons and neutrons, and this one has eight protons and neutrons. These are the three different isotopes of lithium. Some isotopes are radioactive. And what this means is that the radioactive decay means that the nucleus of these atoms break down or disintegrate. And they do it by emitting particles and energy. Well, here I have a comparison of what we're set out to do. We wanted to compare mass number and atomic mass. The mass number, notice that, is not listed here. I told you before in the previous podcast that we could round this number off to the nearest whole number and consider that the mass number. That would be our mass number. But it is not found in the periodic table per se. It is the mass number is always a whole number, which in this case would be four. The atomic mass, which is this number right over here, which is in atomic mass units, which we have already discussed, this number, first of all, is not a whole number. It, it represents the average masses of all the atoms. So it is the average mass. This number is the average mass of all the atoms, including if there are different isotopes. The, this mass is not a simple average. It's a weighted average. It's a weighted average of all the isotopes of that element. We take into account the numbers and the percentage. And, by contrast, it is found on the periodic table. So there's a big difference between those two numbers. A simple average assumes that the same number for each item. Okay, we have the same mass for each item, or we have the same no diameter for each item. But a weighted average takes into account that the items are not necessarily the same. Let's take a look at this video clip in order to clarify this. Hey, welcome to my kitchen. Today, I want to tell you about weighted averages and simple average. First, I'll tell you about simple average. If I have this mandarin orange and this clementine, notice that there are two different sizes. One is bigger than the other. If I wanted to average their mass, I could weigh this one and then weigh the clementine, add the two masses together, and divide by two. That would give me the average mass of these two, the clementine and the mandarin orange. Reverse. All right. But the problem is that I don't have an even number of these. I don't have 50% the large ones and 50% the small ones. I have six of the smaller clementines and two of the larger mandarin oranges. So if I did the simple average, that would give me a totally skewed, a wrong number. I have to do weighted average. And this works like they do your weighted average or your, of your grades in school and how they calculate them. So let's begin. I have two of the larger mandarin oranges, and I'm going to mass this orange, and I'm going to have this mass in grams. And the mass of this orange is 126 grams. The mass of the mandarin orange. So I'm going to write this down. Mass of mandarin orange equals 126 grams. Then I'm going to take one of the clementines and I'm going to determine its mass. And the mass of the clementine is 83 grams. I am going to assume 
that all of the clementines weigh the same and that all of the oranges weigh the same because I'm trying to simulate the isotopes in, a, in an um, element. Eighty three grams mass of the clementine. Now I'm going to determine what percentage of each one I have. There are a total of eight oranges, but two of them are of the mandarin variety, the larger ones. So I'm going to determine the percentage and I'm going to say 2 over 8. That will give me 2 divided by 8 equals 25. 0.25 times 100, that would be 25%. And 6 of a total of 8 will give me, times 100, will give me 75%. Now, I know I have 25% mandarin oranges and I have 75% clementines. This will simulate two isotopes of the same element. Now, I'm going to go ahead and calculate the weighted average. Remember that the weighted average is the sum of the percent abundance, and I'm going to put that as a decimal, times the mass. So the sum of each one of these calculated. So I'm going to start out with changing the percentage to a decimal, 0.25, times the mass of the mandarin oranges, the la larger one, 26 grams. I'm going to say this is mandarin. And the clementine, it's going to be 0.75 times the mass, which is 83 grams. 0.25 times 126 equals 31.5 and 0.75 times 83 equals 62.25 grams. Add those two, equals 93.75 grams. That is the weighted average of the sample of oranges. We're going to actually set out to calculate the weighted average. How do we do that? And what does it take into account? It takes into account how often each isotope occurs, or what percentage is isotope A or B. And it also takes into account that isotopes don't exist in equal amounts. So what do we do? Here's the formula down here. This is the formula you're going to use. This symbol, sigma, the sum of the percent abundance times the isotope mass of each one of the isotopes. If there are five isotopes, you will do this operation five times and then add them all up. So jot this down because these are the steps you're going to use. You're going to take each isotope's mass and multiply it by a percent in a decimal form. Put it in decimal form. So you're move, going to move the decimal over two places. Do this for all the isotopes of the elements, and then just add them together. That's all there is. Let's try this calculation. We have, what is the average atomic mass of boron? If it exists in 19.90% of 10 
10.013 grams per mole and 80.10 11.00 grams per mole multiplied times the mass of the isotope. And I'm going to put, in order not to confuse you, I'm going to make these AMUs. Rated average that is listed on the periodic table corresponds to the answer that we got for the problem. All right, now it is your turn. Go ahead, figure this problem. In case you're only given a rounded off number, you're only given the mass, but you may use those masses to calculate your average atomic mass, your average. And when you get the answer, you will know if you have it right, because when you check rubidium on the periodic table, the number should correspond to the weighted average or the atomic mass, the average atomic mass listed on the periodic table. Have a great day.